Lit is the founder and CEO of Universal Connections, Inc., the world's premier relationship firm that is revolutionizing life through holism and truth. A highly sought life and relationship coach, professional matchmaker, astrologer, philosopher, and author, Ayelet is always Ayelet. This episode of Always I Yell It is brought to you by Mezzy Grill. Mezzygrill.com, usgoldcoins.com, that's 1 800 hot coin, and Carpe VM, carpevm.com. Hello, and welcome to Always I Yell It. Thank you so much for joining me, and it's my absolute pleasure to be here, and I'm excited to do yet another show. Due to overwhelming demand and uh, request, I have been inundated with emails from my viewers and voicemails from my viewers. So today we're going to dedicate a special show, a special segment of Essential Ayelet, wherein I'm going to talk about a few uh, important matters, items I think should be brought to your uh, consideration and your consciousness. Um, also, we're going to do a special segment on Ask Ayelet, where I'm going to actually finally get to answering all the Ask Ayelet voicemails and emails. Not all of them, but I'm going to get to as many as I possibly can. And there were some great questions in there, so please stay tuned, and I trust that you will enjoy the show. So today um, is... The first, it's, it's, oh. Today is um, an auspicious time, actually a memorable time for us. It is Labor Day weekend. And I, one of the things I wanted to talk about, you know, in Essential Ayelet is the importance of Labor Day weekend and what it represents. And I don't think many Americans actually know why we're barbecuing. And what I find interesting, and, and I think, is lacking in the United States of America is a sense of nationalism in its true meaning, in its true sense. And I think if that existed, you know, today there's the Patriot Movement, if you will, or the Tea Party Movement, which I don't want to, um, you know, uh, endorse or represent, but patriotism and nationalism, I think, are two very important elements that are essential for, for us as Americans and are essential for our, for our country at this time. And Labor Day is, and Memorial Day. Memorial Day brings in the summer, Labor Day ends our summer, which is interesting. And both of these days actually have somber origins, but yet we're barbecuing, getting drunk, and you know using it as m marking points for the beginning and end of the fun season of summertime in the United States of America. And I just thought it would be important to share some insight and background as to how this, this holiday originated. It, it, I believe it was declared a national holiday in 1894 during the second term of President Grover Cleveland. Interestingly to um, audience is that Grover Cleveland was the only president in American history who was reelected to two terms two terms of presidency that were not consecutive. And so I think that's very interesting. But the, the, um, the origins of Labor Day did not have such happy beginnings. They came about through a lot of sacrifice and even bloodshed and loss, material and, and soul loss to our country through the labor movement that originated during that time. And today, when we're barbecuing and grilling and uh, um, uh, you know, aggregating with our families and neighborhoods and friends, I think it's important that we might consider where and how and the heartbreak that, that, in, that created the holiday of Labor Day and why we're commemorating the, our, our labor, our work in the United States of America. So, just something for you to keep in mind um, while you're barbecuing and having fun this weekend. Um, we did, the labor movement originated to help create an environment that was more affable to the worker, to, 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 to workers. 
so that they would not be misused or abused in their employment by management. And oftentimes, um, oftentimes, I'm having a hard time today, I'm sorry folks, but please bear, bear with me. Um, oftentimes, uh, people lose sight of what gives us um, the powers that be. I, I know I can speak as a woman um, and being a feminist, yet, yet a, a traditional conservative, conservative, but yet a feminist in my own right, believing in equality and equal rights, I couldn't be where I am today if it weren't for my predecessors in the movement of the 60s and 70s. And of course, I mean, that's a whole other show that I intend to do at some point in the future, but every revolution, every movement has its strengths and challenges. And so we need to take what it is and be grateful and not um, uh, deride from whence we, we've come and from where we, we came and originated. So just to kind of give you the heads up on that, um, the strikes and work sh stoppages that were, were um, opposed by, they were brutally opposed back in the time. And we got to a place where, for the most part, um, we're able to work in a country if there are jobs. <laughs> That's another issue. But we're able to work in a country if there are jobs with, with, with um, greater equality and rights for all employees and, um, and we mustn't and can't be abused by employers and management as such. So enjoy the holiday, folks. And I wanted to bring up a very important word that has come across my palate, especially today on my ride into Manhattan. I was thinking of... Uh, the heartbreak that ensued that created the holiday of Labor Day. And I'm preparing a very important show next week, which I urge you all to watch. Um, it's a very important show. It's going to be my commemorative episode for 9-11, the 9-11 memoriam. And I have um, a family who is going to be joining me um, next week, and I uh, was corresponding with them uh, in preparation for the show next week. And the word heartbreak came to mind. And of course my heart's been broken numerous times and in numerous ways. And as I was wondering, I was contemplating the words of my guest for next week and she said, she wrote in her email to me, she said, my heart is broken for, I, I wrote her with, great compassion and um, exchanged with her um, dialogue and writing and I expressed my empathy and sympathy and compassion for her loss. She lost, her, she lost two of her children as a result of 9-11. And I can't, I remember corresponding with her husband and saying, is your wife still sane? Because I can't imagine the pain and anguish that one would experience to lose two of your children within two years. It's, it's heart-wrenching, it's heartbreaking. My heart broke when I heard this. I was literally moved to tears for about 20 minutes. And so she wrote me back and she said, yes, my heart is broken forever. And so it made me, it moved me and it made me think and made me think about heartbreak. You know, what is heartbreak? And being the I yell it that I am, and in my area of expertise, I've of course worked with this subject matter and throughout my career. And um, I have some thoughts that I'd like to share with you and hopefully um, Christine is watching and all of you are watching because heartbreak is a universal experience um, without getting too metaphysical or too, um, Spiritual. I, I am. I, I will never denounce my spirituality, my sense of spirit, my sense of self, my relationship with God, and what that means. And without getting into too much, and it, and it isn't religious, religious or about religion. It's just about who I am. But it is my belief that we have souls that live forever. Our souls are immortal, and. It is my belief too that before we come to earth in this incarnation, and I firmly believe that any religion that you may uh, 
subscribe to, if that is what you do, my audience, they will not reject any of what I'm about to say. So what I'm about to say isn't going to contradict any belief system that is currently prevailing in, in your respective diversity. We have a soul, and I, I've had arguments and debates with atheists in my career, both professionally, personally, and even familially. And, you know, an atheist allegedly doesn't believe in God. And so when I have this discussion with clients and I have the ability to, or, or even personally, when I have the ability to refute this position, I say, okay, well, if you don't believe in God, then you must believe in science, because that's usually the opposing argument to any faith-based belief system. And the person would generally say, yes, I believe in science. So I would say, well, in seventh grade science class, I remember learning that, I, I, then I would say that, um, okay, well, do you believe in energy? And as a scientist, of course we believe in energy. So do you believe that energy doesn't die? And the person would respond, of course, and energy doesn't die. Energy gets transformed. Well, don't you believe that there's an energy force within you that propels your life, that, that sustains your life, your existence? And the person would say, of course. Well, well, what do you think happens when your body dies? That energy moves on. And that energy, in my belief, is your soul, your spirit, the core, the essence, the essence of who you are. And so it is also my belief that before we come to, we're here to learn, folks. We're here to learn. Our life on this planet is full of heartbreak. And oftentimes, the heartbreak you're experiencing or you're feeling isn't necessarily what you, isn't necessarily caused or pre even precipitated by what you think it is. And I think I just said that correctly. The heartbreak that we're feeling is embedded within our psyches from before we even came here. And they're here to, to show us and teach us that which we must master, which we must learn, which we must overcome in order to grow and evolve spiritually. And please don't take this in the wrong light as if I don't empathize with the loss of a son or the loss of a daughter or the, or the, or the loss of any loved one or of anything whatsoever. I have less compassion for material loss but a loss of life, a loss of blood and soul is, it's irreparable, but there is purpose even in that pain. I believe our, you know, there was also the debate about heaven and hell and the discussion on heaven and hell. And I believe that um, life on earth isn't always fun. And I think our approach to life on earth will determine whether we're living a heavenly existence, a divine existence, or we are creating hell on earth here for us. I think my message of living a love-centered life, seeking liberty, seeking life, seeking freedom, seeking truth, will facilitate having heaven on earth. And that, that is my aspiration. I, yes, call me an idealist, call me, but I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a pragmatist as well, you know? And I've analyzed this in my years of philosophizing and theorizing and experiencing and observing life in the manner in which I uniquely do. And it's more cost effective, practically speaking, it's more cost effective to be truthful. It's more cost effective um, from a material sense, from a pragmatic sense, from a spiritual sense, from an emotional sense, to be truthful, to be free, to seek love, not power, not control, not dominion, just to simply be who you are and say what you think. And I think in attaining that, we will attain heaven here on earth, or at least a semblance of such. So, Back to what I was saying about heartbreak, when we're, when we're in he before we're born into this incarnation on earth, 
we're in heaven. I believe we're in heaven. And we're in heaven and we're with God or whatever, this, with the source or whatever you want to, however you want to articulate or define that sense of being which does exist. And for whatever reason, whatever our soul's purpose is, we meet with God and we decide together. We choose together to come back to earth to learn, to master some vital spiritual lesson. And before we come to earth, we know what that curriculum is. It's just like you going to college, you're signing up at NYU and you're taking a course in film and theater. So you know what you're going to be studying before you, take, before you learn the lessons. And then you're going to be taking an exams and you're going to have to write papers and it's challenging. But you're already prepared because you signed up for this curriculum. And if you signed up for it, you can, you can and you will withstand it. I don't know if you will. You have the ability to if only you do the work. You have to do the homework. You have to take the lessons. You have to go to the lectures. You have to write the papers. You have to take your exams. You have to prepare for your exams. And that's what we're doing here on Earth. In life, we're learning. We're, we're, we're mastering ourselves, our unique individual selves. And so what is heartbreak? Heartbreak is the spiritual lessons that we must overcome as individuals. And everything that happens to us on this earth that breaks our hearts, and I'll get into that in a minute, but everything that happens to us on this earth that breaks our hearts is just reminding us of the pain we already knew when we were in heaven. We knew this existed. And we were sent here to master that pain, to master that lesson. And so we will have experiences. We will have relationships. We will have gains and losses and, and, and joys and sorrows that will remind us of what we inherently already know. And the purpose of heartbreak is to allow us the opportunity now, here, on this earth, in this university of life, school of hard knocks, however you want to define that, to master your individual self. And the degree you get, the degree you get, is not a piece of paper you're going to hang on the wall that says, you know, Kuma, you know, graduated cum laude and you know you're now a PhD you're going to become a PhD in you and that PhD is going to give you a sense of contentment and peace and wholeness in your current life in your current existence no matter what no matter what adversity will come your way and if we're not already able to withstand the pain, we will not have suffered it. And sometimes the heartbreak that perpetuates or that, that another, okay, so you have a broken heart, you have a bad relationship, you get your heart broken, you move on. But sometimes that heartbreak isn't really about Joe breaking up with you. It's about something much deeper than that. Joe is just a reminder of the pain that already, the wound that's already existing within your soul. And, you know, your father leaving you when you were five, or your mother, you know, abandoning you when you were 12. Whatever that, whatever the wound, or your mother dying when you were 12, that's a horrible pain for anyone to endure. That wound, is now going to be reopened by the perpetual relationships that are going to continue to cross that person's path until that person is able to master themselves and understand why they're attracting teachers to, to show them, the, to re-show them the pain that they already know. They're going to attract, or we're going to attract teachers to, to help us overcome this pain and to, uh, God willing, with our own unique individual strengths, eventually um, grow, 
grow and evolve from that experience. So if you just, you know, were dating someone for the last three months and, you know, it didn't work out and now you're heartbroken because why, why are we, what, what is heartbreak from a pragmatic sense? It's a disappointment, it's a disillusionment, and it's a shock and or disbelief in something we believed in. That's what breaks our hearts. You know, as little children, we believe our mommies and daddies are going to love us and protect us and care for us and be with us forever and guide us and cherish us forever. And a lot of times that doesn't happen in one way or another, but the wound is still the same. Um, my cousin, 37 years old, prime of his life, a good, a good husband, a good father, just dropped dead, just finished his shift and dropped dead at the age of 37. He left behind three little girls. Is the pain for those little girls any different than the pain of a father just upping and leaving? you know, when they were 12 or 13. No, it's the same wound, it's the same scar. The factors that created that wound are different in each of our respective lives, but the wound is still the same. There's a sense of abandonment for those little girls, there's a sense of loss, there's a sense of griefing, grieving. Um, and that's a wound that is going to recur in their lives, unfortunately, and hopefully they'll find the strength to overcome and to grow from this and eventually heal. So heartbreak is created from a sense of loss, a sense of disillusionment, a sense of disappointment, um, a sense of, you know, disbelief. You know, I, I can't believe, I believed in something. I trusted something. You know, how could this happen? Why is this happening? That's, that's what brings a heartbreak on. But if you're having a hard time overcoming that pain, whatever that loss may have been, there's a wound deeper within your soul that is being reopened to enable that pain. And I think if we come to terms with the spirituality of our being, the essence of our being, that even our children are gifts, our lovers are gifts, our benefactors are gifts, our, our parents are everything we have on this earth. Every, every person we encounter, whether they are here for a reason, a season, or a lifetime, whether they are blood or they are just a stranger passing by, they are, in my view, angels coming here to give us a sense of life or teach us something about ourselves, about our lives, and our purpose is to learn and not attach to one particular being or lesson indefinitely, but to, to just move on with life. And I know that sounds cold and I didn't mean to say that, but to, to, to just to continue to grow from the moment we're born, the universe our chart is cast and our uni the universe is con constantly moving and constantly changing and, and we need to, we're growing. We're growing internally, we're growing biologically, we're aging, we're trying to stop that, of course. And cosmetics do a, have a great role in, in, in pre preserving our youth and our, uh, our, our longevity and I, I believe that, that that's part of the new era that we're approaching. But um, we have, to, we have to continue moving with life. Don't let life stop you. Heartache and heartbreak is sad. We, have, we, 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 we bear children, we birth children. Some people lose their children in the womb. Some people lose their children right after birth. Some people lose their children after 20 years or 30 years. There's no, no greater pain in life than to lose a child or to lose a loved one in any capacity. And, um, but we need to understand that that person was here to give us that love never dies. That person never dies. Their soul still exists. It's just their physicality has ceased. But they live on 
in the love that we have for them and in the love that they gave us for whatever it was, for how long as it was, and even our enemies, the people who have hurt us deliberately or maliciously or intently, even their value lives on, hopefully, in your lives through mastering those lessons, mastering those pains, and learning and acknowledging their presence in your life as such and thereby not allowing them to get the best of you and not to lessen who you are or what your value is because of, um, because of how they behaved or mistreated you. We need to take a break and thank our valued sponsors. So if, when, when we come back, we're going to talk more about heartbreak and some other important parts of Essential Ayelet right after these messages from our very important sponsors. First, I would love to thank Mezegrill.com, where authentic Mediterranean food meets modern flavor. Now serving breakfast on 8th Avenue at 55th Street in New York City, just a couple of blocks south of Columbus Circle. And I'd love to thank usgoldcoins.com, that's 1-800-HOT-COIN, our trusted advisor for investments in rare gold and silver coins. Andy takes the mystery out of buying silver and gold by holding your hand. They take a hands-on approach. Better to call and speak directly for current inventory. That's 1-800-HOT-COIN. And CarpeVM.com. Seize your market. Say it with video. Charlie works closely with you from beginning to end to ensure that your video makes an impact. Video on the web is ideal to engage your viewers. And I'd love to hear from you. So please give me a jingle at my Ask I Yell at voicemail, which is 212-569-6969. Again, my Ask I Yell at voicemail is 212 212- 569-6969. Or you may email me at ayelet at onlyonetv.com. That's ayelet at onlyonetv.com. If you ask me a question, I may answer it on an upcoming episode of Always Ayelet. Also, um, if you have trouble emailing me or remembering this email address, you can find you can ask Ayelet questions at askayelet.com, and I will be happy to answer your question on air at my first opportunity. So back to, um, back to what I was saying with regards to heartbreak. I trust that what my, my, my words are, or my messages, is that we, no one can cause us, nothing on this earth can cause us pain that doesn't already exist within us. It only happens to give us the opportunity to heal the wound with which we were born. The reason, the purpose, the, ess- the essential reason why we are here to grow, to perfect our souls, to master um, karmic lessons, life lessons, and grow emotionally and spiritually and eventually ascend to a higher plane when our purpose on this earth is completed. So I also wanted to bring in, make an important mention, um, folks, of the word love. I often use the word love. I think it wouldn't be I yell it if I didn't use the word love. And I've been critiqued in the past you know, don't call my husband darling and don't tell me you love me. And you know what? I do love you. If I'm saying I love you, it means I love you. And not in the way you think I mean or, or what, what I think is misperceived in the world at large. And part of my personal purpose on this earth is to reteach people what is love, how to love, and how to be truly loved. And so I just wanted to clarify that very important point because... Um, I I received a message this week. I was corresponding with someone online, and I got a a message back. It's quite humorous, actually, Um, (coughs) from someone who wrote, 
Dear sister, I'm not going to mention names, <clears throat> but the message said, Dear sister, for what you posted, and, and this is misspelled, mis, it's poorly written, but it's an important point that I think it ruffled my feather and I thought it was an important message. I mean, since when is saying you love someone or using the word love a dirty word? Why is love a dirty word? Why can't we all say? And, and love in the way that I define it, which you can find on my website at alwaysayellit.com. Love is not an emotion. It is not a sexual desire. It is not even a neurotic desire. Love, very simply stated, and I elaborate further on my website, but love, very, very simply stated, is value, it is honor, and it is, and it is respect. Respect and honor are interchangeable, obviously, but love is compassion. Love is understanding. Love is acceptance. Love is tolering, tolerance. Love is caring. And when I say I love you, when I say that you are my beloved audience, that's what I mean. I mean, I value you. I mean, you are important to me. I mean that without you, I couldn't be here today doing what I'm supposed to do on this earth and fulfilling my life purpose and hopefully enlightening your lives, um, entertaining you somewhat, um, and maybe adding a little levity or humor in some, in, some, in some areas. But this is very funny, actually. She writes, Dear sister, for what you post it in my husband saying with lots of love, which by the way is my standard closing to all of my correspondence, I think some people are not happy about it. He is a God-loving man and love his family. Well, that's wonderful. I'm glad to hear that. Well, I think God would be very happy to know. If he's a God-loving man, I think God would be very happy to know that there is someone else on this planet that is sending him lots of love because, frankly, I don't think there's enough of it on this planet right now. And if love or saying lots of love is a dirty word, really, folks, what is this world coming to? Not to mention the other important current events of the week is the United States government are you getting this, folks? The United States government is suing the major banks of the world for, it's just so convoluted. Um, actually, I'm going to, to share with you how I most eloquently can um, share with you this preposterous, I mean, what does it say about our government? What does it say about our country? Folks, it's time for the truth. And if anyone has an issue with what I'm saying, or you don't politically agree with me, you don't spiritually agree with me, you know what? You're not listening with your heart. You're not, if you're not understanding what I'm saying politically, spiritually, emotionally, in whatever context, then you're not listening with your heart and I urge you to open your hearts, open your minds and listen with your heart because your heart will always know the truth. If you're, if you're in a relationship that isn't suiting you, your heart is speaking to you. Listen to your heart because your heart will always steer you right. Your heart, believe it or not, is rational. It's the mind, it's the mind that is, now, when I say heart, the heart is rational. It's your subconscious inclinations that can be irrational. And those mo most often, my darling, beloved audience, are fear-based issues that we, we, we generate. And I talk about it a lot in my last episode when we talked about love and fear-based choices. And I emphasized the very important point that love and fear are the two prevailing deciding factors affecting human choice. Love and fear are the two prevailing deciding factors affecting human choice. And fear is usually propelled by the mind, the mature mind, 
not the innocent child mind, but the, the mature mind and subconscious inclination. Your heart will always know the truth. And when you're having a conflict, an internal conflict between your heart and your mind, listen to your heart, rationalize what is being said, and then make some pragmatic sense. And if you need any help in this regard, you can always reach me at alwaysayelet.com. I would be happy to have a one-on-one -on -one with you. I'm also offering a special promotion for only one TV viewers. It, you can save $395 if you register online today for an only one t for only one TV viewers. If you register for our special intro package, you will get an extra one-on-one -on -one at no additional cost. It's an extra. That's two one-on-ones with me, at, at for the price of the already discounted, significantly discounted uh, special intro offer. You can find that or learn more about that at alwaysayelet.com. Um, you can always call me at my Ask I Yell at voicemail, which is 212-569-6969. Again, my Ask I Yell at voicemail number is 212-569-6969. Or you can email me at ayelet at onlyonetv.com. That's ayelet at onlyonetv.com. So I'm always happy to hear from people one-on-one. -on -one. Everything you tell me is always utterly confidential, unless you want to join me on the show. <laughs> That's another story, then that wouldn't be very confidential, but um, you'd be helping yourself and also helping others through your, through your lesson. But I'm also able to do that, I think, through my show and um, with guests or just essential I yell it. So what I wanted to... Um, bring to light as well is um, heartbreak, destiny and fate, two very other important elements to our purpose here on earth. And oh yes, I was going to talk about the very important current events. Um, yes, the US government basically forced banks to make high risk loans these loans defaulted, okay, and so the government takes over costing taxpayer, takes over these defaulting loans, costing taxpayer billions of dollars, and then now is suing. It's just so convoluted, and it just doesn't make any sense, and it's what's happening, folks, so it's time for all of us to learn, to listen, to get informed. Stop labeling people. I don't care if you're labeling them Republican or Democrat or right. Or Stop labeling. Listen to the truth. Listen to your heart. If something isn't making logical sense in your rational mind, it cannot make, ra it cannot make sense in your heart. It cannot. If someone is feeding on your fears, you will follow that fear if you're not strong enough and will fall victim to that manipulation. But if you're listening to your heart, you will know the truth. And I urge you folks to please open your minds, open your hearts, ask questions, inform yourself. Make your own, don't just follow the lead just because everyone's doing it. Do it because you want to do it. That's freedom. That's independence. Independent thinking, independent. Independence is thinking for yourself, feeling for yourself, knowing your own truth and doing, being true to yourself, preserving yourself, preserving what you represent, whether it be your own individual life, the life of your family, the life of the people you love, the life of your nation. We must do whatever is necessary to first and foremost self-preserve and defend ourselves at all costs. And um, that's a very important message. So without any further delay, my darlings, I think it's about time I answered some of my Ask I Yell It questions. And I hope that my essential I Yell It 
will resonate for you and um, that you might even watch this show more than once and see if some of the concepts of heartbreak and truth and love and the use of the word love will resonate to you. You know, in Europe, in London, love is just a, like darling. Yes, darling. I mean, what's wrong with using the term darling? What's wrong with you? Why is using a term of endearment to engage with someone, whether you're dealing with them personally, professionally, or other, why is that a bad thing? Shouldn't we all be endearing ourselves to each other? Aren't we all human? Aren't we all part of the same race? Part of this, aren't we all brothers and sisters? Don't we all have the same blood that flows within our veins? Aren't we all universally alike in the end of the day? And so I believe if we live with love, lead with love, govern with love, and be love, we will essentially attain heaven on earth. So enough of that. Without further delay, I'm going to answer some of my Ask Ayelet questions from my very valuable viewers. And I have some interesting questions here. Actually, I had a lot of relationship questions, but I thought in order to bring some levity to that heartbreak discussion we just had, I would answer a very important question from Sarah from Sacramento. Sarah from Sacramento wrote, I yell it, I love Oscar. <laughs> she writes, I love Oscar. Let me just put my glasses on because these are hard to read. She writes, I love Oscar. I have to say he has to be the cutest thing. I know how much you love him and how important he is to you. What do you feed him? I'm, I'm considering adopting a dog myself. What do you feed Oscar and how would you um, ensure that he has the best or the best life, the best the best um, nutrition that he, that he needs? Well, the answer to that, Sarah, is, and, and oh, oh, and where did you get Oscar? They want to know where I got Oscar. Sarah from Sacramento. Well, Sarah from Sacramento, first of all, I feed my little boy Oscar um, wellness food. I, I researched it um, extensively and Wellness is a great brand. I'm not working for them. I should get credit for this, I suppose. <laughs> but um, they are, their ingredients are all natural, all human grade, real. You don't want to feed your little boy, your little canine or feline boy or girl, anything with animal byproducts. Because essentially what you're feeding them is ground up chicken bones. I mean, it's and, and horse legs and God knows what else. It's, I can't imagine kissing my little boy after he's eaten something like that. So especially since he's my kosher little boy too. But back to what I feed Oscar. Wellness is a great brand. I, I buy it at Petco. And it's all human grade, all natural foods. They use real deboned chicken and grains and vegetables. And you see how he's waking up when he knows we were talking about him? Yes, baby, my mommy's talking. So, and, and Sarah from Sacramento, <laughs> yes. Now, I have to say in advance that Oscar is a unique exotic breed. He's the only one of his kind. And the story behind Oscar, since you're asking, Sarah, is a great story, actually. Um, it was about, actually, it was our, we just had our six-year anniversary, so it was about six and a half years ago where I came to a crossroads in my life, and I decided I could not live without a canine little boy any further. And so I set out to find the perfect little boy, and Oscar is exactly when I had a vision in my mind, in my soul, what I wanted, who I needed to complete my life at this stage in life, it was Oscar, physically, in, in every way. So again, that go, goes and coincides with my, um, my uh, message on faith and belief and believing in the universe, that the universe will always provide exactly what you need, exactly when you need it and how you need it. So the story behind Oscar was I, was I wanted somebody just like Oscar. Oscar weighs 3.8 pounds. He fits in a carrier bag. And yes, I dined with him in five-star restaurants. And I've stayed at five-star hotels. And no one ever knew the wiser because he's my little angel. And yes, he knows we're talking about him. Yes, Oscar. OK. 
Oh, mommy, sorry, pumpkin. Oh, sorry about that. What happened? Yeah, Oscar is very sensitive. So I always teach my clients that there's two sides to every coin. So that part that makes him so affectionate and loving and darling also makes him a little bit of a mama's boy. So, but I got that out of my system with Oscar and not my biological son. But anyway, so the story with Oscar, I was setting out to find a little boy and I was researching and learning and discovered that there were a lot of not nice people on the internet out in the world marketing little 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 boys and girls because that's what they are to me they they are all god's creatures they're all little boys and girls and i in my venture of you know getting oscar making sure that i get a good uh, you know a healthy little boy i learned the proper questions to ask you know um, to, 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 uh, to, dis to discern whether or not this is a real deal breeder or just another, you know, bad group of people trying to, whatever, exploit animals and people in, in the process. So in my search, I was look I wanted a cute little dog. I was thinking a Maltese. I was thinking um, a Yorkie. Um, my mom had a Yorkie at the time. I was allergic to Yorkies, and I am allergic, but I'm not allergic to Oscar, FYI. Oscar is hypoallergenic. So my mom suggested I get a Papillon. She thought that would be the perfect little, little canine for me. And so I didn't know what a Papillon was, believe it or not. But I went online, and at that point, I had already started researching um, the, 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 the adoption process. And when I went online and I found Papillon, the first website I found, I called, and the lady I discovered immediately was the real deal breeder. Long story short, she had been breeding champion Papillons for the last 10 or 15 years prior to this episode. And she just rescued Oscar's biological mother from a woman who apparently didn't know what she was doing. And she put Oscar's biological mother in a room with Oscar's biological father. Oscar's biological mother's name was Jasmine, and his biological father's name was Zachary. And Zachary was a feisty little one. And if you want to learn more about this, you can go to my um, Facebook, my Always I Yell at Facebook page, and you can see the, the photo story, the photo journal of Oscar and his life, and the onset of his life. And um, so I'm hoping this is answering your question, but Oscar, when people ask me, oh, what kind of dog is Oscar? What kind of breed is he? I say he's a unique exotic breed. He's the only one of his kind. Oh, but what kind is he? Well, I gave you half the story. To learn the other half, you're going to have to go on my Facebook and uh, watch the photo journal to learn more. And so uh, Oscar was born, I believe, right about the time I contacted the breeder. And there were four in the litter. I was clear that I wanted a little boy. And I was clear that I wanted a little boy. And in the litter, there were three boys and one little girl. And the first boy was Oscar. The second boy was black and white. And I'm sort of partial to black and white. And the third was another boy that was Oscar's color. And then the fourth was a little girl. So I was certain I didn't want a little girl. And I won't elaborate as to why I didn't want a little girl. But... Um, the, I was torn between the first puppy and the puppy number two. Puppy number two was black and white, which was sort of like my theme color and how I kind of see the world, and I was inclined towards number two. But puppy number one, and I told Kay, the breeder, that I wanted a little boy that I could take with me. I have a very dynamic lifestyle, and I'm working all the time. I have a very dyna dynamic lifestyle, and puppy number two was growing. That I wanted a, a little puppy that I could put in my bag and take everywhere with me. And puppy number two was growing at twice the rate of puppy number one. So I, in the end, I think it was at 15 days old, I made the life-changing decision to choose puppy number one. I named him Oscar. Oscar is my name. I named him after Oscar Wilde, who was my absolute favorite writer. I fell in love with Oscar Wilde when I was in London, when I visited London in 1997. And I went to see a play in West End called An Ideal Husband, and I was deeply moved by the brilliance of his work. And I went out in London and bought the collection of all of his works. 
I believe, two collections of all of his works. And then I said, when, I, when, I, when I'd have a little boy, a little canine boy, I would name him Oscar, and so I did. So I named Oscar, and then at 12 weeks, I, dro I drove out to Wisconsin. He was in Wisconsin, two hours north of Green Bay, and I drove nonstop, 15 hours straight. Don't ever drive through the state of Ohio, FYI, if you're trying to avoid any uh, um, traffic infractions. I... Uh, Drove out 15 hours straight, got to the breeder at 2 a.m. Eastern time, which was 1 a.m. Central time, stayed the night, and the following morning, I'll never forget my little boy, the first time we met in person, he, was, he came out on the, on the, it was August, August 7th, and he came out on the little picnic table they had in the backyard, and he was shaking, he was all tiny, and, and I drove him home the next day, 15 hours straight through, the whole ride, not a peep, not a poop, not a peepee, nothing. And we've never been apart since. And that's my, that's my story for my little Oscar. And so I haven't fixed Oscar. It's against my faith to do so. It's in my belief. Um, it's denying the human, or the human, the, the animal inclination to procreate, in my opinion, is a travesty of justice and, of, and, of, and is inhumane. And, of course, I protect my little boy, and he hasn't misbehaved. He's still... He's still a virgin, my little Oscar. We need to find him a little, we need to find him. Yes, Oscar, yes, he's in love with his mommy. We need to find him a little virgin Shih Tzu. We need to find him a little virgin Shih Tzu um, to procreate with. And God willing, if anyone's interested when that time comes, I'd be happy to give any female um, puppies to those of you who would like another Oscar because he's the only one of his kind. And so I hope this answers your question, Sarah from Sacramento. Um, and I wish you luck in your search for a little canine friend. And I have to say it's the best love, but you have to give. Oscar doesn't wear a leash. The love that I profess, I have with Oscar. There is freedom, there is love, there is trust, there is caring, there is understanding. And, I, and he was raised, he was born into a breeder's environment where he was bred in that manner and I continued on as such. And that is why he is the way he is with me and he's so well behaved and et cetera. So you, you reap what you sow, but, I, but start off with a real deal breeder, know the questions to ask, ask the right questions and then um, make your choice. And I wish you lots of luck and lots of love in your quest for your perfect little canine boy or girl and or, and or feline boy or girl. Because it's the best thing. Oscar's the best thing that's ever happened to me thus far. Um, I have, I think, time for one more question. Um, John from Long Island asks, how does one build a healthy, lasting, and truly loving relationship? Thank you for your question, John. I really do appreciate it. You're going to have to continue watching my shows you know, into the future. Um, you can also log, log on to, to give you the answer in a nutshell. Um, you're also going to have to log on to my website at alwaysayella.com to learn more about what true love is and what a lasting, truly loving relationship is, what I refer to as a true connection. Um, but in a nutshell, just to answer you quick, quickly, um, a healthy, lasting, and truly loving relationship must be founded on a solid foundation of truth. It must be founded on a solid foundation of truth. If your relationship is founded on a lie, on a manipulation, on any coercion, on any sense of fear whatsoever. It, it, it may last, but it's not a loving relationship. And if you've seen any of my previous episodes, you'll know that marriage, lasting loving relationships are not a marathon. Oh, how long can we stick it out? No, 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 no. That's living a hell, that's living a fear-based life. That's living hell on earth living the heaven that I refer to, living a love-centered life, must be founded on a foundation of truth. So if you're online, tr online trying to meet people and you're lying about your age or you're projecting nonsense of who you think you are or who you wish you are, that's not how you're going to find true love in your life. 
if you're putting on an act, if you're, if you're being anyone but exactly who you are always, you're not going to be able to have or build a lasting, truly loving relationship. So to answer your question, it starts with a solid foundation of truth. And if you can envision a pyramid, and you'll be hearing this again into the future, and we'll be elaborating on this more into the future as well. If you have a solid foundation of truth and you can envision a pyramid, you must have truth at the foundation of the relationship. And I don't care if this is a romantic relationship, a business relationship, a familial relationship, a, 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 a girlfriend, a boyfriend, a male friend, you know, a, a buddy relationship. Any type of relationship must be founded on truth with honor, value, devotion, and trust and love emanating from its center. That is how we build and develop a lasting, truly loving relationship. I hope this helps. John from Long Island, please tune in again next week. Um, I do have lots more questions. I'm sorry it took me so long with my whole heartbreak diatribe, but I hope very much that you've learned something, maybe have strengthened somewhat, and maybe you've recognized that the most recent heartbreak you've just experienced is merely an old wound being reopened and an opportunity for you to heal completely that wound so that it can never be reopened again. And life isn't easy, folks, not for any of us. And we must be strong, we must be love, and we must be exactly who we're destined to be. So with all my love, I wish for you a wonderful week ahead. Please be sure to tune in next week. I have a very important episode in commemoration of 9-11 and, and, and its victims. Um, with all my love, I wish for you a wonderful week ahead. God bless, a love-centered life, and I am always Ayelet.